Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on today's edition. Views on the continent of Pan African television in the studio today. We are analyzing the gesture by the World Health Organization as it donates uh, 14 vehicles to the Cameroon government as its own method of assisting the country in combating the COVID-19 pandemic, which has been eating up the world and that has been forming change in the course of living in the world at large and in Africa in particular. Today, in views on the continent, your interactive program which welcomes calls, participations, contributions from all and sundry from all of you watching us from across the world. We're analyzing this gesture in a country which has recorded over 1,800 deaths and which has poor health facilities. Uh, Cameroon was honored yesterday by the World Health Organization to receive some uh, beautiful cars, which uh, the World Health Organization says is to help the health personnel in the center region precisely in order to to assist them uh, to carry out epidemiological uh, uh, surveillance across the region. So today we're in the program views from the continent. We're trying to analyze what you see or how you can you perceive this gesture by the World Health Organization and uh, how better could the World Health Organization assist the country Cameroon taking into consideration that Cameroon has recorded over 1,806 infected cases since the first infection, uh, since the first case was identified on February 24th and already 915 recoveries have been registered with about 59 people who have lost their lives. This we recall, recall is a pandemic that has been eaten up the African continent that has already been eaten up even the world at large and many European countries have been faced with a lot of these uh, disaster and are highly infected by this disaster. So we analyzed this in the studio this afternoon. How best do you think uh, Cameroon can be assisted by uh, the World Health Organization? It has also been assisted by uh, some individuals and institutions. We do recall Jack Ma and uh, the Alibaba Foundation. We recall millionaires and billionaires in the country itself have been donating to assist the government to fight, fight this pandemic. We equally recall even the UBA Bank and several other banks have been assisting and Air All and Sundry have been putting hands on deck in order to join the government in fighting this pandemic. So now, analyzing this gesture today, the World Health Organization donates 14 vehicles to assist the government in its own way. Uh, on the social on social media, obviously, pundits have been thinking that this could, this is a, is a nice gesture, but it could be made in a better way. And some have been proposing that it would have been better for the country to receive uh, ambulances. And uh, many perceptions, many ideologies have been coming up. There is a clarification to be made. Some people were thinking that this is the loan and the first uh, assistance or donation that has been done by the World Health Organization. But it is not because the World Health Organization equally donated face masks, gloves, and a uh, uh, gowns, medical suits and all the like before this day and it before this day when it decided to think that the government will equally need some cars in order to help them the health personnel to make rapid interventions when they are being called. So today in views on the continent your intervention is going to be welcome with the numbers that appear beneath your screen for you to tell us what you think about the topic that has been tabled for you this uh, afternoon. In the studio, in my company, is Mr. Gabor Honoré Chapchet, a political analyst who is going to give us his own know-how. Mr. Gabor, good afternoon and thanks for honoring the invitation. Good afternoon, Rita. It's Thank a pleasure you. for being here again today. And good afternoon to your millions of viewers across the continent and the world at large. Yeah. <laughs> okay, televiewers, this is Views on the Continent, and we are going till 4 p.m. Stay tuned as uh, we will uh, invite you to take a listen to this report that has been analyzed by Louise Bidbank. They will be back in the studio for analysis. The health agency of the United Nations in their efforts to assist countries fighting the coronavirus pandemic has on Tuesday, April 28, made donations to Cameroon consisting of vehicles. The donation, which also include masks and other protective gears, were handed to the Public Health Ministry delegation of the Central Region. The vehicles, according to the World Organization, will be used in the Central Region to enforce the response capacity in regards to the COVID-19. At the moment, the Central Region is considered as the epicenter of the coronavirus, although according to figures from the Ministry of Health, 
the littoral region might be topping the charts in terms of infected cases in the country. The World Organization, which recently came under attack by U.S. President Donald Trump, accusing the organization for not doing much in handling the pandemic and suspending his country's support, is again witnessing another wave of criticism from opinion leaders and politicians as many wonder why Cameroon should receive luxury cars from the organization in a country with under-equipped health facilities, lacking the much-needed respirators or ventilators stockless of adequate medical staff. The donations come at a time the continent is brazen up in personal efforts to limit the spread of the virus, better still eliminate it completely from the continent with the use of natural herbs and rapid response measures. Madagascar at the moment is leading the fight against the coronavirus in the continent with COVID organic. African leaders in their numbers have rallied behind Madagascar for the COVID organics, although the World Organization still drags its feet to approve its effectiveness. Senegal, on its part, has developed low-cost test kits that produce coronavirus results within minutes, while Ghana recently has offered hundreds of ambulances nationwide for emergency response to patients diagnosed with COVID-19. Cameroonians in their numbers on social media and in the streets have questioned how luxury vehicles will help Cameroon in the fight against the coronavirus, while others have described the WHO's donation as misplaced priority. Cameroon at the moment, according to the Health Minister's recent report, has recorded 1,806 coronavirus cases with a total of 915 recoveries and 59 deaths. Thank you, Luis Bidbe, for this detailed analysis regarding the topic that has been tabled for uh, our televiewers this afternoon. Views on the continent is on for those that are just joining us in the studio. Mr. Gabon Honoré Chapchet is a political analyst, and we are out to analyze this gesture that was made uh, by the World Health Organization towards the Cameroon government. The government uh, yesterday, uh, they meet the, the regional governor, of the central region received 14 cars from the World Health Organization as its own uh, efforts to assist the country battle this uh, COVID-19 pandemic that has left the country with uh, over uh, 1,800 uh, infected cases and uh, 59 deaths. Mr. Gabonori, how do you analyze uh, this gesture? Well, uh, first of all, you know, the, uh, the answer that I will give to the question will be on two sides. Yeah. First, as an African, we will say thank you for the donation, for the gesture. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, as a gift, you always thank yeah, someone we, we who offers appreciate. you. Yeah, you must appreciate and thank the person who has offered you something. Yeah. But now, as a, as a uh, political analyst, as somebody who is trying to look at the things very critically, I will say the gesture is not for now is not appropriate is not good because looking at the pandemic looking at the COVID-19 mm -hmm. they are giving 15 or 14 or 12 luxury cars yeah 12 luxury cars 12 lux to the personnel for surveillance to survey what to the survey. is to, to help them to rapidly intervene for epidemiological uh, surveys. No, I'm sorry because when we look at the level at which the COVID is moving in the country, yeah. we don't need that for now. We don't need that for now. I heard in your, in your intro you spoke about some, 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 some of the masks and the gloves that yeah. they have been sharing before. I think they would have better continued in that, in, in that yes in that direction because the people now need more of that the people need more of those kind of things africans in cameroon we don't have enough ventilators if the pandemic spread so very fast and many people are contaminated and many people are under critical conditions where are we going to take ventilators if they brought bed sick bed ventilators more masks more sanitizers and all the rest who would have applauded for them but they are bringing 12 luxurious cars to give to personnel is it to equip the people to be the personnel to be more i don't know are they trying to help the personnel or they're trying to 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 to, to, to fight the, the pandemic so i believe for me they would have even gone they, have, they would have gone more by using uh, some disinfectant that is trying to disinfect the interior 
of the country as what we saw in China. You know, they have some of their personnel in other countries, so they know the protocol how to fight this kind of pandemic. They would have walked into the interior and tried to disinfect the interior, coming up to the capital, knowing that by walking that way, they would have been limiting the spread of the virus to go to the interior. But now they are bringing cars for those people to transport the virus and go and contaminate the people in the interior. No, I think that that gesture is not proper. And critically, when we look at it, like some other people said, we want to know if WHO has not been doing some games with the authorities in the country. Okay. Because normally when you are looking at the pandemic, when you are looking at what is happening, the people, the population need more of things to protect themselves than to for cars to be given to personnel to come and survey something which might not have reached those places already. But uh, Mr. Agaba Honore, you know, it is said it is a donation, so it's a gift. But now I wish to know: is it do do you carry out uh, uh, donations when when carrying out donations? Do you necessarily have to inform uh, the person you're donating to the kind of things you're going to donate to the person? Rita, you give a donation if your donation comes and does not has nothing to do yeah. or no help to bring to the people. It's more like uh, 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 an embarrassment than being a, a donation, a gift, because you are coming with your donation as a relief to the people. Yeah. But you are bringing something that will not have anything to do. That's why I said there must have been a kind of game played with the, the, the authority and the WHO people because normally before coming with those kind of things they go to the uh, the authority they try to ask what are their needs okay what are their needs and i don't think at this level the need will be those luxurious cars if they even brought ambulances people would have said yes because the ambulance can evacuate the people from the interior to the capital or to the places where they are the, the, the hospital are well equipped yeah. to, to, to tackle the problem. But they are bringing luxurious cars. We understand by it that you will see after the pandemic, the authority will benefit those cars. Yeah. Because we have been seeing it when some those international organizations come after a, a, a program in the nation, cars always goes back to the authorities. So I believe these are cars that have been made for DO an SDO, because coming to give 12 cars, luxurious car for the matter, to say you are coming to tackle the problem of the pandemic in a country where the people don't have good and equipped hospitals, yeah. I think it's a mockery. It's a mockery. Yeah, but so now. I will advise WGHO, you know, if they really want to come and say they are doing it for us, for the people of Africa, for the population, they have to, re they have to withdraw that gift and go and sell those cars and buy more masks, buy more ventilators, buy more equipment to disinfect our villages and our towns than to come and give 12 cars to people that will not have any better need. Yeah, Mr. Gabo Honore, you're speaking in light also with uh, uh, many pundits and uh, citizens of uh, the country from across all the social media when this uh, uh, news break out yesterday and we precise we're out here since we're out to inform and to educate we precise that many were taking it in all directions thinking it is the only assistance that the world heard organization has given to the country uh, cameroon we come now to precise that it is not the the only assistance that the world heard organization has uh, given to cameroon as it equally had given some 75,000 uh, mask face mask it had given some 75,000 face mask it has given uh, a couple of uh, 10,000 gloves 1,200 gowns 900 face shields uh, 200 goggles all to yaoundé okay now
Do you uh, do you think the World Health Organization could have come and made these uh, donations without actually asking the government what would have been their their their, their basic necessities? Because I know uh, uh, people of goodwill, when you want to equally pay a visit to something like an orphanage, you if you you, you go there and ask their needs so as not to give the same things uh, over and over. Why do you think that we should rather be blaming the World Health Organization? It it is the of uh, the Cameroon government to have actually uh, precise what they actually need. You have said it all. You have said it all, Rita. Yeah. That was another uh, side I was trying to enter into. Mm -hmm. Why only in Cameroon? Why only in Cameroon? That to assist the people, to assist the population, they will bring luxurious cars. I think someone said that this government has a problem, that this government is a cursed government. This government has a problem. This is a government that plays with the life of his people. This is a government that plays with the life of his people. Because why is it that it's only in Cameroon that they will bring 12 luxurious cars and give to, to, the, to the authorities? Why? This government is playing with the life of the people. They know the needs of the population. There are people who cannot afford even 200 francs to buy for a mask. You know, for some time now, we have what we call confinement. There are many people who are there who don't have money either to buy water, uh, I mean to have clean water, to wash hands, yeah. or basins and all the rest. There are people. We should not limit ourselves looking at Douala Yaoundé. There are some places where before you go there, before people see clean water, it's a problem. Before some people have money to even buy soap, it's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. So why is it that it's only in Cameroon that we see such kind of things? Why is it that it's only in Cameroon? That's what I said. The authority of this nation are framing something by asking WHO to bring as her luxurious cars to give to the people. Remember, the central region has 12 divisions. Yeah. And they have given um, 10 divisions, I beg your pardon. And they have given 12 cars, 12 luxurious cars, which automatically says that after the pandemic, this car, one car will be given to every SDO of every division. Okay. So the government is just looking for ways to get cars and give to the authorities than really going and looking at the problem of the people. And, and looking at the problem of the people. Because when they will give those 12 cars, Mr. Governor will have more other cars added to the fleet of cars that he has already. The other SDO will have cars added to the other cars that they have already. Mm -hmm. I think this is a gross insult. This is a gross shame to the authorities of the nation because doing such thing and even sending it on air is a mockery. It's a mockery. I saw some parliamentarians asking, asking the WHO to be accountable to what they are doing in Cameroon because you cannot come with cars and give to, 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 to the authorities when you see people are there begging for soap. They don't even have soap of 200, 300 to buy and wash their hands and you're asking them to wash every 10, 30, 15 minutes. Mm? I think this thing is not proper. This nation of Cameroon has to sit down and relook at these things because this is not very good. In the same light, uh, Mr. Gabon Onori, uh, looking at uh, the tweets from the Minister of Health, Manawada Malachi, he said uh, that 84 uh, more cases as of yesterday, the 28th, had been uh, recorded with 22 recorded in Yaoundé and 61 in Douala, that's the littoral region, and one in uh, Betwa. How then do you uh, uh, weigh uh, this, uh, the spread of uh, this pandemic across the country? And why is uh, Yaoundé still considered the epicenter, whereas Douala has been t taking the lead with all the infections? Because the government is not doing anything, let's say it that way, proper. You know, among the 13 measures yeah. that were given to contain, to like restrict the, the spread of the, the, the pandemic, you know, when you go out there, you see how people are behaving, you see how people are living, you, you, you are surprised, you are shocked to realize that, you know, the measures are not being respected. They are not, respected they are not being respected. And the government is not doing anything to enforce the respect of those measures. So, and somehow also, we will not blame those people because 
the measure says people should not go out, people should stay at home. Yeah. And you know, people will stay at home when they don't have anything eating. There are people who live day by day. They live hand to mouth. Mm -hmm. So you ask them to stay at home. When you, the government, you have not done anything to support them, to accompany them into this period of crisis. You have not done anything. Even countries like, <coughs> excuse me please, like Chad, have been able to donate some money to buy food and share to the population. They have been able to bring measures like the population will not be paying electricity for three months. They will not, be, they will not pay water for six months yeah. just because the government wants to support the population, to accompany the population yeah. through this period of crisis. But in Cameroon, nothing proper has been done. For the common man in the street to feel it, nothing proper has been done. And that's why the virus is spreading more in the littoral. Because people want to go out and do some little businesses and have their money so that they can live. You will ask them to stay alone, they will say, we will stay here. What will we what eat tomorrow? We huh? So I believe those are the things that after two months of the pandemic being in our walls, being in the country, the Cameroonian government has not done something proper to support the population, to help the people by staying at home so that they can contain this virus. Nothing has been done in that line. So you can't blame those populations. If the epicenter is leaving Yaoundé and coming to the littoral, I will say it is normal. It is normal. You see the people of the transportation sector. The price of fuel has dropped everywhere in the world. The barrel of oil is lesser than two dollars. But in Cameroon, the price of oil is still up. And you are telling those people not to carry more than three in a vehicle. How possible? What have you done to help them? How possible? Yeah. For Christ's sake. So I believe this the authorities of Cameroon are not serious. They are not serious. They are not serious. Sometimes people look and they say some we just like to criticize, we just like to talk against the government. But you, you can only compare two things. Look at what the neighboring countries are doing. Look at what our country is doing. The price of oil is still at the same price. Nothing has changed. And you're asking people that they should stay at home. You're asking transporters not to carry more than two people in the vehicle. How do you help them? I believe we have to be serious. We have to be very serious and be responsible in the decision that we are taking. This is a call for the government to look at this sector, to look at this pandemic with a different eye. Yeah. If they don't take some measures that will help to reduce the spread, to control and destroy this virus, this virus might end up destroying the continent, destroying not only the I mean Cameroon, because you see other countries in the continent have been able to do their best to really support their, their, their people. That's why you see the, 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 the spread, the infection is not growing geometrically yeah. as it's growing in Cameroon. So I believe the authorities of the nation have to wake up. They have to wake up. They have been doing, but we are saying that what they are doing is not enough. It's not enough. They can do better. They can do better. We saw the other day over the national TV, the two billions that the head of state gave. Two billion. They say the head of state gave. Well, we take it that way, that he gave two billion. But what will represent two billion compared to the 360 uh, uh, local uh, 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 councils that we have in the nation? What is two billion? What is two billion? When you make some calculations, you make some decisions, you see that the people, the masses, they will not still benefit anything. Because you give 4,000 cartons of, of, of soap to a council, a council that have more than, let me say, uh, 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 900,000 people under the council. What are they going to do with that? Let us be serious for Christ's sake. When we want to solve these kind of problems, let's take adequate measures. Let's take appropriate measures. Let's take things that will, when you look at it, you really yeah. see that this is a solution that has been brought to tackle this problem. Not okay. joke that we are seeing. Okay, thank you Mr. Gabon Honoré. Uh, for those of you just joining us, this is Views on the Continent and we are analyzing uh, the gesture by the World Health Organization towards the Cameroon government with the donation of 14 vehicles. And uh, Cameroon also 
is already in a state uh, is having a peak of infection cases with over 1,800 people already infected and 915 uh, recoveries. So your take on this is going to be welcomed as the numbers appear beneath your screen for you to participate through our Facebook live program or call the numbers and we get you live on the program this afternoon. So talking about uh, uh, the other countries and the way they are fighting to curb the spread of this pandemic in their various countries, we cannot talk without having to mention Madagascar with its president, uh, Hajrulina, who has uh, actually uh, approved of uh, the COVID organics medication, which is countries using and some African countries have approved, appreciated, complimented and have even ordered for it. But yet the World Health Organization is cautioning against this, doesn't think it is yet uh, uh, to be confirmed as a cure for the coronavirus. I think we have to applaud and clap for Madagascar. You know, everything has a start. Everything has a beginning. Yeah. They have started, and they have started well. And uh, also applaud all the African leaders who have been able to give a call to the president, encourage him, and ask him to send some of the, the, those uh, uh, drugs to, their, to yeah. their people. I believe our country, Cameroon, has to emulate that example because there is no shame. There is no shame there to ask them that brothers, we have seen that you guys have gone ahead, a step ahead of us into this thing. Please also send some. We want to place an order. So I believe what Madagascar has done or is doing is something to applaud for. Yeah. Even if I'm saying it, even if this treatment is no 100% okay, I will applaud for them because they have tried. They have tried. Yeah. And we should at Plot for those people because it's only by trying that you know if yes or no you you you, you, you will be better eh? so they have tried we have to encourage them we have to appreciate them african leaders have to see what their brothers have done place their orders because the who does not recognize the the, the treatment of madagascar we will say no problem we don't even need you to recognize we don't even need you to recognize because we know that the world is being managed by interest. Nobody is the friend of the other one just because you are beautiful, you are nice. No. We know these people will never accept that the treatment can come out from Africa. They will come to Africa, they will push Africans aside and try to exploit what Africa has and bring it back and say, we have created something. So we don't even want WHO to recognize it. We want that Africans should recognize their product because I said it the other day that COVID-19 is a flu. Yeah. It's a flu. And COVID-19 has been in Africa for more than two months today. And when we are looking at the rate of death, despite that some people are saying the, 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 the numbers given by some government are not real, but one thing is sure, I said, this sickness is like pregnancy. It can't hide. If people are dying in an alarming way, yeah. we will all know it through the social media. We will all see it. We will, the population, the people will film it and put it on air. And it's so, we should always uh, and rely on social media. Yeah. I understand that we should not rely, but I'm saying that when the truth is there, you can't hide the truth. Yeah. You can't cover the truth for long. So the, the, the pandemic is not doing a lot of havoc in the continent like it does elsewhere. So it's a flu. So by the grace of God, our immune system has been able, because of too many flu, we have developed some kind of resistance. Yeah. I'm not neglecting the, 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 the killing nature of the COVID, but I'm trying to say that as from the, the, the statistic that we have, the COVID is not doing the same havoc that is doing in Europe, like in Africa. So yeah. we welcome the treatment and we advise other country to go for that treatment. Let us drink it. Let us protect ourselves. We don't even have much money, such a way that, or much equipment, such a way that if the COVID is spreading, with what are we going to fight? Yeah. So let us use that treatment from Madagascar. Let us start using it. The traditional treatment. Okay. The tradi yeah, uh, let's start using but, it. But uh, Mr. Gabon, you know, Africa as a whole is enriched with uh, 
uh, helps with traditional leaves, with traditional medications, which many many people or most African countries can equally go back to these uh, traditional medications and uh, uh, have to also come up with something. How do you how do you uh, analyze this other this uh, the way Africans are taking or are fighting uh, against uh, this uh, uh, COVID nineteen? How do you analyze the medical? situation and uh, also the various doctors because we have uh, in some countries also some doctors are coming up with uh, their own proposals of yeah. medicines but their governments are not uh, approving them so how do you think this this can be done and do we uh, how should how can we know that uh, the the medication that has been created by these various uh, doctors is confident is effective, can be trustworthy, because we are talking about the lives of people. Who then is going to be the, 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 the test body for the doctors to be able to try and see if their medications which they've discovered is equally very effective like that of Madagascar? It's a pity first for those uh, countries who are not accepting the doctors in their nation who are trying, those who are trying to help with the treatment. Yeah. It's a pity for those governments because they are still waiting for the white man, <clears throat> for the Western world to come and give the approval before they start using it. It's a pity. And you know, with traditional medicine, with the medical plant, you know, we are used to that. We are used of drinking, of taking it. And before those guys come into the limelight and say that we have a treatment like this, it means they have tested it on the people themselves. Yeah. They have tested. We are Africans. We shouldn't be afraid of saying those things. They have tested it on the people, and they have seen the result. They have seen the result. That's why we are Africans. So Africa naturally has the medical, all these herbs, all these green leaves. That has something, that uh, medical uh, uh, value yeah. that we can exploit against this kind of uh, pandemic. Yeah. And I will also say that Africa, the best way for Africa to fight this pandemic is to use what they have. Because if we are just looking at the international world for them to bring us ventilators, for them to bring us bed to equip our hospital, we'll be wasting time and this thing will be spreading for nothing. Mm -hmm. But if we start taking those, our medical plants, using what we know, what we have, it has result. It gives result. I don't think the president of Madagascar is a madman that will come to the open air and say that my people have found something. Yeah. And he takes it and drinks it. If that thing was deadly, he wouldn't have ventured to drink it. The ways for him to drink it is to give a go-ahead. Yeah. Yes. A, 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 an inter a recognition about the treatment. That this treatment is good. It doesn't have uh, any secondary effect is not bad because they have had 179 cases and the, all the 179 cases have been healed, mm -hmm. no dead. So I believe we need to fight this COVID with our own method that we have than waiting, waiting for the white man to say, no, well, take this, this thing, this we will this send you this thing, we will give you this thing. No, let us use that treatment that was given from Madagascar. I think it's a solution. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gabonori. We have Okola online who wants to give his own uh, view regarding the topic of today. Mr. Marcel, you're calling from the littoral, from Douala, the re littoral region of Cameroon. Welcome to the program. Good afternoon. Hello? Um, from all indications, this... Uh, Hello, Mr. Marcel. You're live on the program. ...what they are doing. Because in a real sense, because... It is not something that the Cameroon government they are lacking or the Ministry of, of Health is lacking. At this point in time, we have something which is our main priority, our main goal is to kick out this coronavirus in Cameroon. Because I bet you the only thing that they were supposed to do is to assist Cameroon with medical facilities. Medical facilities that will facilitate. We don't have testing kits. We, have, we don't have ventilators, energy, all those things like that. Those are the things that the WHO they were supposed to buy and give Cameroon at this point in time. We are seeing how the cases are increasing every day. Thank God, thank God that the recovery cases also has been increasing 
in 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 a goodwill but at this point in time it is not the vehicle that was supposed to be the main priority that the who could have assisted we have other things that that, that that they could have assisted medical equipments are not there go to hospitals that are taking care of these people they, they, why, why could they not okay say construct a particular hospital that will take care for this particular for, for this particular patients we have seen in ghana what the 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 the, the president has just said about uh, building eight, eight hospitals in the whole republic uh, in the whole republic of ghana that will help to cure or in combating the coronavirus why could they not use that same money they use in buying those vehicles in to convert it in building hospitals and to and to and to put all the medical facilities in it rather than buying vehicles that after af, that after this it is only individuals that will be making use of all those things like that so at times if we want to make a particular gesture we should look into it what we and uh, what we benefit the whole country not some particular individuals as i said now at this at this point point in time we are we are crying of medical facilities that are very poor in cameroon those are the things that i thought the who could have helped cameroon not those vehicles because just that finally speaking they have misplaced pro uh, 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 property thank you Thank you, Mr. Maso, for your contribution. We uh, really appreciate Mr. Gabonore. You got uh, Mr. Maso, the caller, who was also of the same uh, 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 opinion as you, who thinks uh, that Cameroon has a poor health facility and uh, had a, a, a higher need of medical kits and uh, medical uh, uh, assistance rather than uh, vehicles which uh, the World Health Organization donated to uh, the governor of the littoral of the central region yesterday in the country. So now, looking at uh, the coronavirus pandemic in Africa and uh, concentrating on Cameroon this afternoon, we'd also like to uh, see how the country has been fighting to curb the spread of this pandemic across the, across, uh, the national territory. As uh, the, Minister of national of, uh, uh, the Minister of Health has announced that 915 people have already uh, recovered with 1,000, with 59 people who have died and a total of 1,800 infected cases as a whole. Uh, we should also, uh, we need to really appreciate the, the efforts made by the, uh, the government of Cameroon. So, because they are also fighting in their own way. So we get now to see how they can do it in a better, in a better way that is going to assist even the low person, the, le the least citizen to be able to also respect these instructions given among uh, the 13 measures to stay at home and to stay safe. So we go back to our call center and get another caller who's calling us from Malabo. Hello, good afternoon, tell us your name, please. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Louis, coming from Malabo. Okay. I I just want to talk about what is going on in Cameroon. We are having some leaders that they are they are willing to spell Cameroon. The WHO will come and give vehicles to our leaders. I think uh, we lost Luis. You can still come back and uh, call us to make your opinion count. On the program, the lines are still open to receive calls. We still have some time to go in uh, the program this afternoon. Views on the continent with uh, Mr. Gaba Onore as a political analyst in the studio. Okay. Now, Mr. Gaba, I have really been boiling to ask this question to you. Cameroon is uh, at a stage where it, it really counts a high number of infected cases which we, we cannot boast of being able to contain and uh, due to uh, the, the poor health uh, facility of the country. So, in last week, we had so many informations and news that was coming out from the country as uh, the president, the government, annulled the celebration of uh, the first uh, of the Labor Day and uh, the first of the 20th of May 
as the government annulled uh, the celebration of the 20th May in the national in the country due to this coronavirus pandemic. And but the the government equally said that schools are going to resume on the 1st of June. Pundits have been asking how feasible this is going to be. But before. I come to you. Let's get a caller who's insisting, calling from the littoral region of Cameroon. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. 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 Hello, you're live on the program, Views on the Continent. We're listening to you. Tell us your name and where you're calling from, please. Hello. Hello. Go ahead, sir. We are listening. Hello? Call center is the caller is still online. Make him speak or we proceed. Hello? Okay, Mr. Gabonori. You can just uh, you can just drop and call back. Hello? The program is still on. Hello, we can hear you. Okay, it would be nice you, 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 you call back, but I advise you shift away from your television so as to avoid interception. So, uh, Mr. Gabon, like I was telling you, in Cameroon, there, there are some national celebrations, the Labor Day, which is celebrated on the 1st of May, and uh, the 20th of May, which is the Day of National Unity in the country. But these two May celebrations have been annulled due to fears of uh, uh, contaminations of the coronavirus. Now, the government has said, nonetheless, that schools are going to resume 10 days after that, on the 1st of June, and it made it official. It was, first of all, uh, uh, it was first of all hypothetical, but now it has been confirmed that school is going to resume on the 1st of June. How do you analyze the cancellation of National Day celebrations and the feasibility of uh, uh, school resumptions 10 days after? Well, it is, uh, you know, looking at the, 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 the statistics, that yeah. we are having daily. I believe the, that statement, that declaration that was done by the Prime Minister will still be hypothetical uh, because the virus is not, the number of infected cases is not reducing. It is still growing. And I don't think parents will be smart to allow their children to go to school. I don't think so. So I believe government, before giving a date, they should make sure that the number of infected cases has reduced, is going down. They should make sure, because that's what we are seeing in other countries. Mm -hmm. They did not just go and say they will reopen when the number of infected cases is increasing, the number of those who are dying is increasing. No. They went to do giving the date because they realized that they have been able to curb, so curb yeah. the, the, the pandemic. But that's not yet the case in Cameroon. That's not yet the case in Cameroon. Okay. The we, number is going higher, yeah. higher, oh. higher. So I believe that date of the 1st of June might not be respected. For but school we'll, we'll, we'll come back for you to precise uh, uh, better on that uh, point as we take Honorius, who has uh, come back. I hope this time is for good. Honorius, your life on the program. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. I would just want to thank you guys. I just want to thank you guys for the good job you are doing. Uh, because uh, all that you are putting on is an awareness. It's an awareness. I want to appreciate you guys for the good job you are doing. Because all what you are doing is an awareness for Africans to, to realize what is happening around them and to sit up. Uh, I want to say something. I believe that the Western world is part of the reason why some African leaders are corrupt. And uh, if you look at it critically, what we need now, like like everybody is saying, what we need now is short vehicles. We need basic necessities to sustain Africans during this period, to sustain Cameroonians during this period. Some don't even have food to eat. So many have lost their jobs, so many uh, contracts have been suspended, and people are at home. Because 
don't even have the basic necessities. One, when you give these vehicles, it means that what you are trying to empower the government, you are trying to, to empower them with that train of corruption that they have already. You, are, you know, what I'm basically trying to say is that it's high time Africans and Cameroonians sit up and realize that most of these kids that are calling, coming from the Western world, it's more a burden than a helping hand they are extending. So we need to sit up and then we work together as Cameroonians, work together as Africans to assist each other, especially through this period. Because I want to say that if we rely only on the gov- government, I'm telling you, it's a failure. So many people will die individually. Let's contribute individually to see that what this, this pandemic goes away. You understand? I know it's difficult. I know that it's difficult. Like, uh, like, 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 looking at what is happening now, it's it's difficult. But we have to put, put in our effort. Let's not just let's not look at the government only at the government and the West. So let's do the best we can to 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 put this one in. Thank you very much. And for this opportunity. Thank you for uh, contributing on the program this afternoon, Mr. Honorius. So uh, we come back to the studio, Mr. Agaba Onori, you are speaking. You are talking about uh, the feasibility of uh, school resumptions on the 1st of uh, June. You know, the Minister of Secondary Education, uh, Nalova Lyonga of the country uh, Cameroon, precised uh, uh, on, in an official communique that strict uh, uh, instructions were supposed to be followed in order for school to actually resume. And among uh, the instructions that she gave was the repartition of uh, classes to a maximum of 24 students. And she said this uh, resumption is going to be limited just to examination classes. And these uh, students should be limited to a maximum of 24 per class and a couple of other uh, measures that are supposed to be uh, respected in order for the students in examination classes to keep on with uh, their exams of uh, this academic year. How do you, how, how, how do you analyze this? Um, I, I'm afraid that it can still be another copy and paste uh, 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 measures because the Cameroonian government is so fond of that that what they see out they just try to copy it and they bring it like that, not trying to contextualize, yeah. not trying to make it a reality for the people, not trying to make it a reality. But it's already good by her saying that the school resuming is limited to those in the examination classes because it's very important. It's very important to give that precision that is limited to those because after June or, at, or on the first of June, most of during the normal year calendar, most of the, the classes, intermediate classes, have yeah. already closed. They have already gone for the holidays, the yeah. long-term holidays. So it's only the examination classes that remain. And during that period, by June first, some of them are writing already their exams. So, but. My worry will be how feasible is that proposition in our context? Mm-hmm. How feasible is that? Because most of the time, those things are taken, those decisions are taken only when they look at the major cities. But they don't think about the interior most of the time okay. when they take those their decisions. So something is needed. Why those decisions are taken, they should implicate the actors in the field, that is the classroom teachers, yeah. before taking the decision, because the better place to tell is this thing feasible or not. Mm-hmm. Because when they will say 24 at most per class, how many teachers do they have per school? Yeah. You know, a classroom can have 100 uh, 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 pupils or 100 uh, students for, for one teacher. Now you want to divide it 24 per class. How many teachers do you have? How many teachers are available to teach the subject that you are dividing like that? So those are the measures I usually say. They just try to do the copy and paste without really trying to contextualize. There are some schools where you don't even have enough classroom teachers. So when you divide already, that thing is not possible. It's not possible. So I want to tell the government let them take the actors, talk with the actors, discuss with them before taking those measures because they sit in their offices, they sit in, 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 on, on, in their bureau, on their beautiful chairs, 
they just take decision and they throw it like that. They say it will be 24. So that people clap. They say yes, we are respecting the measure of distance, of uh, distanciation or whatever. We are doing this. We are doing that. But which coming to the practicality of it is not it's possible still, to apply it in the field. Okay. So I believe those measures have to be reviewed okay. and try to contextualize it okay. so that our people will benefit. Children, some children will not see themselves being left out left during out. this period of crisis. That's right. You're right, Mr. Mm. Gavo Onore. Uh, we go back to the call center and get Mr. Louis calling us from Malabo, Equatorial Guinea. Welcome, Mr. Louis. Hello? Your life on the program, sir. Make your view count. Thank you very much, my dear sister. Kudos to Africa Media. Kudos to what you are doing there. I appreciate it. You see, I want to give a contribution concerning what the WH will just did in Cameroon, the contribution of the vehicles. I think this is a scheme to do what they plan to do as concerning the vaccine. Because I don't understand whereby people are dying with hunger where they are quarantined in Cameroon, they cannot supply people even a bag of rice for people to share. And they are buying big vehicles for, for, for the ministers and for, 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 for the greater people to enjoy. So I think this is a guy to scheme into Cameroon because I know our government is having those people whom they can, they can just decide one day and scare the country. They don't care about the people. They, can, they don't care about what the people are feeling. They don't care about what the people are facing. I think that my brother there in the family has said it all. If Cameroon government should think what to do, there are no hospitals. There are no facilities even in the little hospitals that we have. And what are these expensive vehicles is going to benefit the, 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 the pandemic that is going around the country? I think our country needs to check well. And I believe there is a scheme for these people, the WHO, and other people who are planning to prepare a vaccine to come and get it in Cameroon, because I know Cameroon, if they just provide them some large sum of money, then we do, then we accept. What about the medicine in Madagascar? Other countries are applauding the, 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 what the people did there. I read again about uh, 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 our Archbishop has come out with a medicine. What are we, what our country doing? These are the things they are, they are supposed to be looking for. Not expecting from WHO to come and keep their self to test their, their so-called vaccine. Thank you, my sister. God bless Africa Media. I love your work. Please keep doing the best that you are doing for us, Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alwi, also for trusting the programs of Africa Media. And uh, we come back to the studio to get uh, a concluding statement from our panelist, uh, Mr. Gabon Honoré Chapchet, your political analyst. I'm glad you honored the invitation to the studio this afternoon. So I would like you now to give us a concluding statement before we get out of uh, the program this afternoon. How now do you, what is the advice you can give to Cameroonians? as a way of uh, uh, helping themselves and helping the government to curb the spread of this pandemic because the government on its own cannot uh, do, do everything because there are some measures which even the citizens are supposed to respect. Yeah, I will call the people and say it is their life. Yeah. First, we should understand it. it is their life. The government is doing what it's doing, but it is their life. So, while living, they know that they have the responsibility to protect their lives and also protect the life of the others. Even if they can be careless with the life of the others, then let them try to protect themselves because by protecting their lives, they will protect the life of the other person. So it is their life and they should make sure that they respect the measures that the government has given. And if some of them are not able to support because most of them are living from hand to mouth. Even going out to do your little business to get your money, make sure you are taking precautions not to be contaminated or you trying to contaminate another one. So it's very important. No other person will come and fight for you. No other person will come and look after you. You should take the responsibility to look after your own life because you die today, the money that you were looking, looking for will remain. You die today, your life continues. Your family, your children, you know, they will remain. 
I don't think it's the best and it's a good thing. So let us be responsible. Let us take care of ourselves. Let us take care of our life. The government has played its part, though not sufficient, though not good enough. Let us take the fight in our own hands and do something to preserve our own life and preserve our families. The efforts that have been done by some enterprises, you see there are already these uh, facilities of washing hands. At, uh, at every entrance and door post, you have to wash Those your hands and, 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 and wear your face mask. Your face mask so you get into, to get into a supermarket, they have uh, this uh, te te thermometer and they have the washing of hands and the face mask which you're supposed to wear. By the time you're not putting on the face mask, you don't get into the supermarket. The government, the government of Cameroon has even all those multinational, yeah. like MTN, sorry for calling some of their names, but we have to be direct and arrange and the rest. During this period, government would have imposed on those people to allow Cameroonians to use the uh, 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 internet and the rest for free because there are people who are not working. People don't have entries of money to be paying those kind of bills. Government would have called those people to support for this kind of uh, uh, fight. But we are surprised that everything just loose like that. They do what they want, they do what they want, and they're asking people to stay at home. It's quite very difficult, but it's, we have to watch over our own lives. It is well, Mr. Gabon Ray. To the viewers, we've come to the end of uh, to this edition of Youth on the Continent. It was a pleasure having you tuned to the program and trusting also uh, the programs of African Media. Tomorrow is another day. So a big thank you to all of you who participated and equally the technical uh, department. Thank you, Mr. Gabon Ray, for, for, for being here and for honoring the invitation. We advise you to stay safe, stay at home, and respect the measures that have been given. Bye-bye for now.